everyone, this is Dr. Salcedo, your conscious gynecologist. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks so much for joining. Today we're going to be talking about endometriosis and the gut microbiome. I'm really excited to share this connection because it really does help ladies understand the development of this disorder and its potential etiology. So let's get to it. Endometriosis is a gynecologic disorder that affects about 10% of women and it leads to significant chronic pain, painful periods called dysmenorrhea, and heavy and irregular menstrual cycles. There is no known cure and it is very disabling and the treatment is mostly based on alleviation of symptoms. What is endometriosis? Endometriosis is endometrial tissue, which is tissue of the lining of the uterus that escapes the cavity of the lining of the uterus and reaches various areas of the pelvic cavity, but also really rare places like your intestines and even your lung and rarely your brain. Most commonly, this endometrial tissue reaches the space between the uterus and the rectum, and it causes significant pain during bowel movements when a lady is on her period. Treatment for endometriosis includes alleviation of pain with usually non-steroidal medications like ibuprofen or naproxen. Sometimes though, ladies will need extra treatment like hormonal stabilization therapy, and this includes birth control pills or injections, or even medicines that help reduce ovulation. Finally, surgical treatment includes resection of areas of endometriosis in the actual pelvis and abdomen, kind of like what I had when I had my ovarian cyst removed that was filled with endometrial tissue. Now, why is endometriosis so painful? Well, what happens is, is when the endometrial cells, the lining of the uterus, escapes into different parts of the pelvic cavity and abdomen, it will also be sensitive to the hormone changes of the menstrual cycle. So just as the lining of the uterus will bleed during your menstrual cycle, so will the escaped tissue. That will also bleed and have inflammation just like your period does. However, it doesn't have anywhere to go. And so it continues to stay in those extra areas and will cause some really bad fibrotic pain and scarring that tends to debilitate women over many years and through their reproductive lifetime. Risk factors for endometriosis include smoking, insulin resistance, processed food intake, family history, and there are very interesting studies that show prior history of adverse childhood experiences or personal trauma elevates this risk. In fact, the nurse's health study reveals that one in three women who have endometriosis have experienced some sort of trauma in their life. There are several hypotheses of how endometriosis develops. The first is something called ciliumic metaplasia, and that is a really fancy term for the cells within the pelvic cavity around something called the peritoneal cavity, which is the lacy structure inside our pelvis that keeps our organs in, somehow converts into endometriosis cells. And those endometriosis cells will bleed just like your menstrual cells do. Another thought is something called lymphatic spread which means that somehow the endometrial cells escape into the lymphatic system, which disseminates the endometrial cells all over the body and cause those unusual implantations of endometrial endometriosis cells in very weird places in the body, sometimes in the lung, sometimes rarely in the brain. The other interesting hypothesis, which most experts tend to agree on is something called retrograde menstruation. Now, what is retrograde menstruation? 
Well, when a woman menstruates every month, the blood from the lining of the uterus escapes in two places. First, it escapes through the cervix and with gravity goes down into the vagina and outer woman's body. But it can also pass through the fallopian tubes. And it, as it leaks out of the fallopian tubes, the endometrial cells can drip to the area of the space between the rectum and the uterus. That's called the rectovaginal pouch. Now that happens to everyone. However, there are some people, 10% of menstruating women, where the actual lining of the uterus reaches that rectovaginal space and sticks there. So what is it about this rectovaginal space that allows endometrial cells to actually stick and implant there? Well, this is where new data is starting to help us gynecologists understand the progression of this disease, endometriosis. In 2016, there was an interesting expert viewpoint published in the American Journal of OBGYNs that looked at aberrations in the gut microbiome and how changes in this inflammation of the gut microbiome could be potentially involved with the increase in inflammatory factors that allow endometrial cells to stick to this rectovaginal space. Whoa, what is that about? Well, those aberrations in the gut microbiome could potentially be associated with the inflammation related to endometriosis. Now, what is the gut microbiome? Well, the gut microbiome is a population of millions and billions of helpful bacteria that live within our intestines that help our body produce vitamins, they help our body process different foods that we eat, and they are also wonderful immune modulators that help our immune system fight off different pathogens that we might be exposed to. However, when the gut microbiome, this collection of helpful bacterial cells in our intestines become destabilized through lots of different kinds of exposures, sometimes smoking, processed food, excess glucose or carbohydrates. Once the microbiome becomes destabilized, it actually allows for inflammatory molecules to leak through our intestinal barrier. Those leakage of inflammatory molecules run down our abdominal and pelvic cavity and settle into the rectovaginal space. Now, if we already have endometrial cells there, those endometrial cells become inflamed when we go through a period. If, but if there are already excess inflammatory markers there from destabilization of our gut microbiome, those endometrial cells will stick to those spaces in our peritoneal cavity and will actually neovascularize or cause new growth of blood vessels that allow connections between the peritoneum and the endometrial cells. And this is likely the development of endometriosis. Wow, that's really incredible. So this could potentially mean that endometriosis could be related to a gut microbiome destabilization disorder. And as we're finding out more and more that lots of inflammatory disorders like rheumatoid arthritis and psoriasis are also caused by destabilization of the gut microbiome as well. This is really fascinating information because it will help women understand potentially their inflammatory triggers. It can also help women understand how to heal their gut microbiome and also potentially and secondarily heal their endometriosis symptoms and discomfort. While there's no cure for endometriosis, we're learning more and more that omega-3 fatty acids can help play a role in the healing of the gut with potential effects in improving endometriosis. We're also seeing that different levels of vitamin D and vitamin A and vitamin E can also help 
improve the gut microbiome and thereby improve symptoms of endometriosis. Since 2016, there have been many medical expert reviews that look at this potential association. And this is really exciting stuff because as gynecologists, patients have a really hard time with treatment for endometriosis because oftentimes they just wanna get pregnant or oftentimes they're looking to really help improve those symptoms that sometimes regular medical management and surgical management don't always approach. So we're going to highlight that how the gut microbiome can actually be improved through lifestyle factors by reducing processed food, reducing intake of carbohydrates and smoking and improvements in our nutrient deficiencies can help overall women reduce their pain with endometriosis. I hope that you felt this video was helpful. And if you did like it, please share it with a friend and subscribe to subscribe to more content in the future. Thank you so much for watching. And I really do hope that this video was helpful for you.